Whether you believe in the four-year cycle or not, you can't deny that there's a pretty nice narrative coming about, and that is BlackRock, not only with a spot Bitcoin ETF, but also with them coming in and being the number two holder of the top four Bitcoin mining stocks. So we're going to talk about that. We're also talking about uh, L2 uh, for Ethereum and the ones that are dominating. We're also taking a look at Cardano's World Mobile Token, and we're going to get into a little bit of AI. And to help me do all that, I brought on a friend because some days it gets a little bit boring. So I'm going to bring on uh, a guy you guys may know, Jerry V. Hall. Not to be confused with Mick Jagger's girlfriend, Jerry Hall. Jerry V. Hall has been on quite a bit of times, and he's had some uh, pretty great interviews. Uh, of course, myself, <laughs> Jungle, Jungle Ape, Liam Connor, Tom Billiou. And also, I think uh, he, had a, he had Raul Paul on a couple of times on his show. So without further ado, Jerry, welcome back to the show. How you doing, buddy? Hey, Rob. Good to see you. I'm doing really well. I'm really happy to be here with you today. Yeah, man. It's going to be a good time because there's a lot of stuff to go over. So let's just, let's just jump into it and not beat around the bush, which is this piece here. So I know some people like on, the sh on my show, I have been very critical of the spot ETF, but I said it didn't matter if it gets approved or not because it's the narrative. The narrative is going to push us forward. All we have to do is uh, wait for Jerome Powell to stop raising rates. Maybe at some point he pivots after the economy tanks, and then maybe turn on that money printer. But regardless, here's what we got. Uh, it looks like BlackRock. Now, I am under the impression, I know BlackRock has been a pretty big investor in the say micro strategy for years, so that's nothing new. But for this one, I don't know exactly when they got into these uh, mining operations, but I find it very fascinating that they're really going in so heavy. We had Larry Fink on MSNBC not too long ago saying that the tokenization of assets is the next great frontier and talked about how Bitcoin is great. Now, if you don't know BlackRock, Jerry is at nine or 10 trillion assets under management. I always forget. I believe they're probably up to around 11. Trillion. See, there you go. Yeah, 11. They're, 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 they're a beast. And I think the trend that the most important thing to take from this is the age old adage of investing in infrastructure is still very much in play in Wall Street, right? They're investing yeah, in what point. they believe is going to be the foundational elements of these networks going forward. And so owning a piece of how these networks are um, administered and validated and operated makes a lot of sense when you're talking about a commodity like a digital asset like Bitcoin that has a limited supply. It's a good point. I, I forgot about that. Because if we control the underlying mode of operation, I think we can dominate everything around it. Ah, well, see, Jerry, this is why I bring you on. <laughs> well, I mean, think of it like this. Okay, so whether it's a proof of stake network that requires the tokens itself to secure it or something like Bitcoin proof of work where it requires machines and electricity to operate it, right, with the, the software, the issuance of the underlying asset, you're at the spigot. You're literally at the spigot. Yeah, a, so that's an advantageous place to be. That is, and you know what? Maybe it's a little too advantageous. <laughs> take this out. This is from Doreen. 51% mining and BlackRock owns Bitcoin decisions. Forks Bitcoin and tries perhaps successfully to destroy Bitcoin. This has been an ongoing topic. Some people have debunked it, but it still kind of goes around. Do you think this could actually happen, Jerry? Because in that, in their, their prospectus, they did talk about the, the chain of Bitcoin moving forward. And of course, some people are worried that they'll, they'll fork and do whatever. I think that would be a huge mistake if they try to say, well, we're going to make it unlimited supply. That's the whole big thing. But do you see There's any kind of value? Issues. All right. There's two issues, right? The, the forking. Forking can happen. All right. Yes, it can. Bitcoin However, cash, Bitcoin SV. Exactly. You know, okay, so go ahead. Fork. <laughs> um, <laughs> we also, we, we also yeah. have to remember, we have to remember that the mining companies are um, heavily invested in by BlackRock, but not owned by. Not owned by. And in, unless they do become owned by a centralized entity, um, I'm not that concerned because there is enough, quote unquote, decentralization that we should survive it. Yeah, I think yeah. I have to I have to agree because I remember because we've been around long enough. Remember in 20. 17 or so when bitcoin cash came around everybody hated roger veer 
hated his guts. I mean, now we don't really talk too much about it. And of course, Bitcoin Cash, you know, I mean, it's still up in the top 50. Then of course, Craig Wright came out, Bitcoin SV. I don't know what's going on with that. I'm sure there's somebody in the comments section will tell me. <laughs> I can guarantee that. But, uh, you know, like if you fork it and, and try to go that way, will you have global domination of something? I think it'd be very difficult, especially with how decentralized the aspect is and what people believe it actually to be and the value that actually derives from it. So maybe I'm wrong here, but I think it's still still a pretty good play. And, and lastly, before we move on, uh, I still think that, that the narrative is going to push us forward. It doesn't matter if this gets approved or not approved. If you got the biggest asset manager in the world saying, we give our stamp of approval to this, and also so does Fidelity, and also so does ARK Investments, and also so does the White House, who has been talking about it, even though they hate it, it gives it legitimacy because at least you're talking about it and you put it in the spotlight. Where am I wrong, Jerry? Well, you're, you're not wrong, but, let, but it's, I don't think it's a fully formed picture, right? So... Credi credibility is important. It really is. It's really important. It helps create confidence, right? And confidence, whenever we're dealing with speculation, is, is important, right? I mean, it, it helps. The real value of an ETF, especially by BlackRock, is an automatic empty bucket that needs to be filled, and it needs to be filled with actual Bitcoin. And that True. actual Bitcoin can only be acquired from two sources. A, the spigot that we just talked about from the mining industry and the existing circulating supply that we, we, you and I, you know, are holding. And so um, that, that I don't think should ever be underestimated. The, the sheer volume of Bitcoin necessary to fill a BlackRock ETF because the demand is there. The demand is there. That's the been is, proven. That is true. Even so, though like, so, yeah, the, the demand is there because I don't think they would go through with this if they didn't see a demand. I don't think they're in the game to lose. They don't have a born to lose tattoo on Larry Fink's forehead. So I'm just no. guessing. Yeah. All right. So that makes sense. I can see that. So that's the piece right there. Again, I think uh, things are in the moving in the right direction. There's a couple of good questions that we'll get to at the end, which talks about what do you think is going to happen at the end of this month, uh, moving into September. And, uh, you know, maybe we'll do a little price predictions today, Jerry. Who knows? But before we do that, oh. let's go on to the second largest crypto by market cap, Ethereum, and the L2s that are surrounding it. I just find this fascinating that L2s are coming out and how much... Um, value is being locked up. So this was an article a couple of days ago, which talks about base. So just real quick, base was introduced on Ethereum mainnet about two weeks ago. Base, if you don't, aren't familiar with it, that is the uh, uh, layer, the L2 layer that was uh, put out by, by Coinbase. And before anybody asks, no, you cannot buy it. So there is no token. This is being used by Coinbase as a purely revenue play. And it's actually working out pretty well. On the day of its launch, the network reported over 150 million in total value bridged over. And that's gone from 150 to 261 million. And actually, if we take a look at, there's a great website, I linked it in the, in the comments, or the comments, in the description section. And you can see just how much is actually uh, locked up. So we went from 140 to 250, now we're at 200, but still it's number five. 242 million is actually locked up on base. This uh, website is called l 2 Beat. And uh, just real quick, I have no affiliation with them. I just use their free data. So <laughs> create, provide, transparent, verifiable insights. What's the difference between, between L2 Beat and DeFi Pulse, DeFi Llama and all that stuff? They focus primarily on tracking TVL. L2, L2 will track only L2 projects. And then this is the big one. And when you're looking at on-chain data, just be aware that data can be you know, kind of manipulated by, the, by what you're going to talk about. L2 Beat and DeFi Llama use different methodologies. L2 Beat accounts for all assets locked in Ethereum contracts, including L2 native governance tokens like Arbitrum and Optimism. And DeFi Llama just focuses on assets engaged in dApps on specific networks. So if it's not an dApp, it's not really going to be recorded. So just so everybody knows, that's the difference here. Anyhow, to finish up, um, ba -ba -ba. oh, more than 100 dApps were integrated with Base at launch. So I'm sure DeFi Llama is going to show that in an attempt to take advantage of the early hype. And this is what 
I find fascinating because as you build a new L2, there's other layers that are going to be able to use that. And of course, if you own those layers, like Jerry was just talking about, picks and shovels, uh, you can see some pretty good price appreciation. Chainlink was brought in as a partner to, pro to provide price feeds for the new layer two. And Dozen Wallet's been integrated. Coinbase Wallet, Rainbow, Trust Wallet, and so on and so forth. And the other ones that have been coming in is One Inch, Friend.Tech, Arkham Intelligence. So Jerry, just the overall view, what do you think about base? Do you think they'll ever come out with a, with a token? And do you think this is, well, you think this is good for crypto? Well, I think, I think the last two years, right? And I think it really, the conversation in this silo or this path needs yeah. to start with Polygon, right? Right. When, oh, yeah, keep going. So, so my point is, my point is we've had two years where it's iteration of iteration of iteration building on something that is obviously flawed. There would not be two years of massive building and innovation for layer twos if the, the layer one was good. True. Ethereum is broken. I love Ethereum. I love what it brought the world, right? It brought the world smart contracts. Yeah. That is a wonderful that is a wonderful thing. We can do so many things with smart contracts. However, Ethereum is just not working. And it seems like, this is my prediction. It seems like we're going to get to a piece of technology that circumvents having to put Band-Aids on Ethereum because it just works right from the beginning. I think so. I mean, I hope. I think in the sh long term, we'll probably get something better. It's just like, oh, yeah. it's just like when we had internet service th in the very beginning. Remember internet service? Like you'd oh, get yeah. like, and you'd have to do like, well, let me get that CD from AOL. Get that CD from AOL. And they tried to jumble things around and make band-aids. It just didn't work out. And all of a sudden we went broadband and other companies came in, internet service providers, and it worked out much better. So I think with Ethereum, it could work with these, with these L2s, CK rollups, optimistic rollups, all those things. But the question is, is someone going to come out with something better? And there's always talk about the, an ETH killer. Solana's an ETH killer, Polkadot's an ETH killer, all those things, right? So we'll see if it works out. And then just to get to your point about um, Polygon, I like to talk about Polygon because I own a boatload of it, and I'm super biased on this channel. But... <laughs> Over on, over on LT, L2B, it asks, why is Polygon not included in your stats? And they say, we define L2 as a chain that fully or partially derives its security from L1 Ethereum. So that users don't have to rely on the honesty of L2 validators. This is aligned with the current view of Ethereum and Layer 2. And they said, but isn't Polygon a plasma, a roll-up, and a side chain all in one? And they said, no. And its current implementation is a proof of stake side chain with validators solely responsible for validating Polygon transactions. We are only interested in what implemented and can be independently verified when their architecture changes. We'll be more than happy to include them. So like, you know, maybe there's a little bit of cracks in, in what uh, people believe as far as Polygon. I will tell you this, there's another website. I'll bring it up right now. Well, like they're saying it's ether scan or nothing, baby. Yeah, yeah, exactly. There's another website everybody can check out called Crypto Slam. I've talked about this a couple of times. And uh, it's you can take a look at blockchains by NFT sales volume. I just found it fascinating that you had this wash percentage, wash trading, just going back and forth and back and forth, right? And you can see that, well, it's, you, know, you can't sort it, but Ethereum sales for NFTs, and this I think is this over seven days, you got 5.9. Wash trading is 2.5. Here's the total. Here's the wash percentage. The next one is Solana. The wash trading is nothing. It's less than a percentage point. Mythos and Polygon, 39.18%. Right <laughs> and not that wash trading is awful for NFT sales. I'm just letting, letting everybody know that, hey, even though you got this, this great stat that there's so many you know, on-chain users and all these things that are going on, just remember that there's data in the background. Again, on-chain data can be a little bit funny sometimes. Anyhow, Jerry, what do you think? You know, again, I'm, I'm back to the, I don't get too excited about building on crummy foundations. Yeah. 
You know what I mean? And, unless, and this is what would change my mind because I, you should always be open with new information to change your opinion. True. And that is if an application that I find valuable reaches a billion people and I'm able to use it and it's built on one of those things, I'm going to be glad I have some of that stuff that I was an investor in some of those things. Right. Well, we've all been investors there. Well, moving on from crypto to, I wish I still had this. I used to have this, uh, this great app. It was called, it was a, it was a clown filter and I could have a clown. Uh, I remember like, that. Yeah. I just, uh, of course, Snapchat took it away. So sorry about that, everybody, but let's not pile on, but here's a pretty good story. And I think this is a story that's, that's going to protect everybody. I think we should all be doing this. The DEA, I'm not going to pile on a DEA. They made a mistake. We all make mistakes, right? But they mistakenly sent 55,000 to crypto scammer and airdrop blunder. And the reason I bring this up is I'm going to show you how they did this and how easy it is to get around it. And I, I told Jerry, I'm like, Jerry, we should start doing this. Just start spoofing people and just ripping people off left and right. But he didn't, he didn't want to do it. Here's the take. DEA fell victim to a sophisticated airdrop scam. It's not sophisticated. It's super simple. And this is interesting. So they sent 55,000 in stable coins to the scammers. Then they reached out to Tether and said, hey, freeze those funds. But the scammers already moved it from their wallet to another wallet to another wallet. And they, or they, they, they put the tether into something else, apparently. So just so you know, all stable coins, unless I'm wrong, most, if not all, they can all be halted, they can all be frozen, and they can all be reversed. So just so everybody knows, if you think like, oh, it's decentralized and it's awesome, not really. So here's what happened. The DEA seized more than a half a million dollars worth of stable coins in May connected to two Binance accounts who were, this, they were being used for illegal narcotics transactions. The funds were stored in a DEA controlled Trezor hardware wallet at a secure facility. That's interesting that they, that uh, the DEA trusts Trezor. Maybe we should take a, maybe I should do a deep dive in the Trezor, I guess. However, a scammer observing the DEA's blockchain activities mimicked a test transaction the DEA had made to the U.S. Marshals Service. That's the beauty about on-chain analysis. You can, it's all there for everything, which would go to my next point, which is this. If you are a terrorist or you are a drug organization, part of the cartels, don't use crypto. I mean, it's just, everything's on-chain. It's a ridiculous idea. Anyhow, by creating a crypto address, the scammers, that closely resemble the Marshals' account, Matching the first five and the last four characters, the scammer tricked the DEA into transferring a significant sum to the wrong address. Here's how they did it. The scammer used a method known as airdropping. They sent a small amount of tether to the DEA's uh, wallet so it matched the test transaction amount. The, the fraudster hoped the DEA would simply copy the, the fraudulent address, mistaking it for the marshal's address, and they did. So, so, so this is how it goes. You have a, a tether address, whatever it starts with, 7532, right? And then we always do this. We always look at the first couple, two or three or four, and then yeah. the last two or three or four, and like, yeah, that's about good. So these guys sent them a small test transaction of like point, you know, point zero zero two tether. And they looked at that and go, oh, that's the Marshall's address. <laughs> and they, and they, hit, they hit the button and they send them $50,000 and now it's gone. So everybody, I have the same problem. I do the same thing. Even on my videos, I'm like, okay, the first two and the last three looks about good. But scammers can do those that where they send you a test transaction. You look at a test transaction and go, oh, that's, I trust that one. And then, of course, you send it on. Jerry, what do you think, man? I think you need to have your head on a swivel, right? You definitely right. need to have your head on a swivel. And, and one of the things that I love about your channel is always right there on the screen all the time. Everybody's trying to scram you. Don't trust exchanges. Don't use leverage and take profits. Yes. Well, I learned this the hard way. I we we all everybody learned this the hard way. And it's and this is the this is the reason why I like talking to everybody now because this is before all the, all the tourists come, right? When the tourists come, which is your family, your friends and family, those are the tourists. We have to be there to be the shepherds to make sure that the sheep don't fall to the wrong things. And we get to teach them all these things. And they're going to look at you like you are the dumbest person in the world when you tell them you can't leave on exchange. you got to take it off. Everything's a scam until proven otherwise. You really need to take profits. You think it's going to go up forever? It's not going to go up forever. You're going to tell them. They're not going to listen to you. 
because they want to learn the hard way and you just got to let them. But it's up to us to really do the, the heavy lifting and be like, this is what you got to do because we've already screwed up. So, I think. That's great advice. And so, that, that's where I'm at with that. You know, we, we just need to be careful. Be careful. Gosh, and then we learn. This. Yeah. And we learn new things. Like, I didn't know they could do that. Now we do. So, I think, Jerry, here's another question. Do you ever get like like random NFTs in your wallets? Oh geez, you you know it, it's gotten so it's gotten so crazy that like for instance on any platform it doesn't matter if it's Facebook or Twitter or what have you um, in my email if I don't, if it doesn't have the check that my system verified you because you and I have exchanged yeah this, that or the other thing. That I, I just, I don't want any part of it. Yeah. And you know what? Sometimes there are airdrops. They really are legit airdrops, but. Absolutely. You know I'm not playing though. I'm not, I'm done with that. Yeah. It's, it's not how much you make. It's how much you keep. Right. Yeah. So this will lead me to the, to the next story. This is from Dave. Personally, I'll be DCing Cardano between 16 and 6 cents with heavier deposits, lower it goes. This could help you out to determine why you'd want to do that. There's this project. I talked about it quite a bit. I think it's one of the few with utility, World Mobile. And as of, I want to say three days ago, could be four, correct me in the comments, but they just launched their app, which is on, it's only on the Android Play Store. It's coming to uh, Apple iOS. And what it's going to be, allow people to do, it's not banking the unbanked, it's connecting the unconnected. And I'll, I'll get into the whole thing with that. So I just want to say, like, first of all, I own World Mobile. I think you everybody should know I don't talk about things I don't own, for the most part. And uh, I'm also a node operator, uh, an Earth node operator. I think it's just cool because it has the wallet out there. You're able to pay for, pay for uh, connection service, and that's and that's that could be cell phone service, and that could also be telecommunications and internet service. And they got a lot of Add credits. What's the other thing? Oh, see like this right here? Scanning. You can scan different parts to, to notify them when there's, like, when there's like a lag and you can earn points. They've got things that are already deposited in the, in the, the app itself. So if you want to buy stuff, yeah, just this, the same thing. And this is all built on Cardano. So there is a video. I think I linked in the comment section, but you can see here. Once you download the app and you pay for service, and of course everything comes to you in rewards as far as Cardano, this will be in your network. Also, here's the features of the, of the app itself. The wallet itself, single address, non-custodial, light wallet dedicated to tokens built in the Cardano blockchain. Manage digital assets such as NFTs and then Cardano native tokens like World Mobile Token. Is it going to be a fiat on-ramp? Transition from traditional currencies to cryptos? So wherever you're at, at some point you'll be able to say, okay, here's my euro. I'll be able to pay for whatever I want to and just swap out. If you want to do crypto and then do trading, I believe, in the app itself. You can scan for points, thing I just told you about. Identify connectivity weak spots across the globe and earn rewards for doing so. Network, you get data bundles. And, and not like 3G, like 4G LTE, like actually fast stuff. Not the stuff that you don't really want to use. Mobile money, facilitate digital transactions. And a marketplace, I just showed you, range of products. You can buy Netflix and Binance vouchers. So that's the piece right there. There's thing, something that... You may notice here. In Tanzania, USA, UK, Canada, Australia, the Cardano wallet's available. Fiat on is available. Network service is only available in Tanzania. What happened to USA, UK, and Canada, Australia? It's not out yet. However, that just happened. Now, this one is, what's the date today, Jerry? 25th? It's the 27th. 27th. This was two days ago. World Mobile is, is launching in the USA. So... You'll be able to use that. Now that's not, it's not, it's launching in the USA. They have a date, it's in 2024. But they are saying that this is when we're actually launching. And just so you know, World Mobile Token, the token itself, it topped out 16th of February, 2022, which was when everything was kind of going down the tubes anyhow, after November, 2021. And it topped out at 93 cents a, a pop. Now it's all the way down to 10 cents. So maybe this may be something to look into. And then also, I think this is the bigger thing. They just had a partnership announcement with AI service or company Singularity.net. 
And what's that gonna do? Well, two things, customer support, they're gonna streamline customer service interactions and elevate the user experience. I don't know if you guys have ever done that yet with AI and their customer service. Like AI can make a, like a bot, an AI bot and talk to you like, you're, like it's a real person. And I've, it, it's not steady and perfect yet, but I've done that with my, I, I forgot which company it was, but it sounded pretty good, but, they, but still, there's still some glitches. So they're gonna do that to, it's kind of like, honestly, it's kind of offloading some of their, some of their load as far as uh, employees. And then also they're gonna do blockchain based loans and AI powered credit ratings lending solutions. So think about all the people that are, um, I don't know where I put it. it. It goes like this. The World Bank says that there are roughly 3.7 billion people in the world that are unconnected. Even though we have cellular service, telecommunications all, all throughout the world, even in America, there's places that you cannot get the service. So this is what they're trying to say, okay, well, we can do this because even in third world countries, the majority of people still have or do have a smartphone. So we have something like this. Think about the places in like Tanzania. Think of places like in Africa. Think of the places like in the Middle East, in certain places, not like Abu Dhabi, they're fine. But wouldn't it be great to do something like this with AI powered? The collaboration introduces AI powered credit ratings because you're not gonna get that if you don't have a bank, right? So it's a pivotal element of uh, lending. Concept that adapts the user's payment history and reputation. So the more that you pay off your loans, the more it builds up, powered by AI and singularity. The first phase targets World Mobile's existing user base, offering credit for contract extensions once the prepay term concludes. Second phase extends credit offerings to establish customers with positive payment. A program sc scope expands to include in individual worldwide who have been unserved by traditional financial institutions. Ah, here's where I was wrong. According to the World Bank, there are approximately 1.4 billion adults globally do not have access to banking service. Two thirds of those unbanked population own a mobile phone, which can enable them to access financial services. And again, also in America, that's why they're launching here because there's places that you do not get service. So they're partnering up with Singularity. Singularity, this is where you get into the AI play, also launched HyperCycle. HyperCycle, I'm gonna link this in the description and you can check it out. But Jerry, you've, you're involved with HyperCycle. How does this all work? Because with AI, it gets kind of tricky. I know that's, that's a big narrative, but if we're gonna overlap AI with blockchain technology, how does this all work together? Okay. So okay, here we go. <laughs> let's, let, let's, let's kind of start with kind of a, uh, a generalization. So, um, for the last 25 years, human beings have been developing and using software to do things better, stronger, faster, right? right. Uh, 25, 30 years ago, accountants used a tremendous amount of pens, paper, and calculators. And then some cool developer created some software where that accountant could do five times more with a spreadsheet. Okay. Right? Yeah. Software created productivity, right? And, right, and right, right. innovation. All right. Well, we're getting to the place now where software is starting to be able to create other software. AI right. is creating software, which is advancement. So one of the things that Singularity Net has been really good about, and I think it's really important to when we think about these entities, think about the teams, and also how would we frame it? So Think of like AWS and Microsoft and Google as huge corporations where their stuff is siloed and the only people that are going to truly profit from their technology and their innovation are going to be the executives and the shareholders of that company. Right. Not you and me necessarily. Not you and me. However, what, just like we talked about with the, with the miners, picks and shovels and being a part of the infrastructure of new systems, whether they be completely decentralized or just distributed or what have you, um, has a much lower barrier to entry. Guys like you and me can, in an afternoon, get an investment in one of these elements. Okay, so right. that, that I needed to, to kind of put that out there. Singularity Net is run by Dr. Ben Gortzel. Dr. Ben Gortzel is the guy that most famously is behind Sophia the Robot. Sophia the Robot's been on 
television. Oh, yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And, and I mean, she's really kind of cool. That was a joint venture, uh, a project between Hanson Robotics out of Korea and, and Ben Gortzel's team, Singularity Net. Okay. They have spun off a lot of other companies, right? You'll see Chu AGI there. You see, uh, uh, you just went to a Sophia Dow. Um, there's a Singularity Dow, which is actually using artificial intelligence to use the hmm. same type of trading methodology that they use on Wall Street for guys like you and me. So you and I can go to this site and buy into a, invest in a 30, uh, a three month cycle and allow the AI to do the train, uh, trading for us. Hmm. Right, right now they're only offering Bitcoin and Ethereum. So that's one element of the AI. Then you've got in, and you've got AGI X, the token for Singularity Net and Singularity Net not only is the mother company for a lot of these things, but is yeah. also going to be producing the quote unquote open source marketplace that when when Digital Asset News, the YouTube channel, wants to contract an AI avatar of Rob to mm -hmm. scan the Internet for the best <laughs> biased information that Rob likes. And yeah. the AI avatar presents the biased information that Rob likes on Rob's YouTube channel. You'll be able to get that AI from Singularity Net Marketplace, right? right. What's HyperCycle? Mm -hmm. HyperCycle is an actual machine-to-machine -machine network where I can be the uh, the human being. I can buy tokens, which are the identity and currency. I can buy a license, which gives me the proprietary right. And I can secure the hardware to have AI modules put into my nodes and my nodes can contract work. So maybe I have the, the, the Dan, the Dan YouTube Avatar. AI ah. searching and scouring the internet for the coolest you know the coolest uh stuff that i want to present on my youtube channel and it, it's yeah. taking into account the time of day that you like to do it and all your biases and all that stuff that's one element the other element is maybe maybe you're a medical researcher yeah right? you're a medical researcher and you need just a ton of computation right a ton of computation well what are your options your options are AWS, Google, Amazon, uh, Microsoft Azure, et cetera. Yeah. These are big, expensive companies that have huge data centers. Well, what if software is now available where Jerry can turn his Mac into a node and crunch numbers, or I can buy a dedicated machine, or I can do little jobs for somebody on my phone and I can do everything in between. So I can have a huge data center with billions of dollars of equipment on this network or down to one guy with one phone. How much value does a global network right, bring right. relative to a, a, a siloed corporation? That's really the play with HyperCycle. So that's like, so you can use the computational power of my computer and you're yes. going to pay me and, and then the the payment for you to use my sweet, sweet, sweet Mac masterful computer is there's some kind of like, is it a token or? There, there it's multi, it could be anything because, okay, again, back to, back to kind of frame of references. You and I grew up in a blockchain world where, let's face it, if it's not on chain, it's not a transaction that happened yet. Yeah. All right. And that sparked this entire, we got to do transaction per seconds and Bitcoin slow at six and Solano super fast at thousands. Okay, all, okay, great. All that's wonderful. Mm -hmm. This Tota IP and what we're working with in HyperCycle is really not a layer one, it's a layer zero. We're below the base layer. We're mm -hmm. at a transactional layer where we can do ungodly amounts of transactions before we ever need to record on a ledger. Oh, I see. So it's like, like, we, like just like we were talking about, the, like, like the L2s. Yeah. They do a roll up. So they do all these transactions. 
hundreds, thousands of transactions, and then they put it on the blockchain in a big grouping, and that's the one transaction. Bam. There you go. It's, it's, you can generalize it like that, although it's not like that. See, okay, there's a premise that we're, we built, this business is being built on, and that is we believe by 2026 that 90% of all internet transactions will be machine to machine. Hmm. Now, okay. right now, currently, how do machines pay other machines? Don't we have to execute that? That's we, the point. You don't need yeah. to. You don't need to when your when your node has the smart contract in it. The smart contract's not on a layer one, and <laughs> that's the big distinction, right? And we don't need to get into the weeds with the technology. <laughs> right. I think what's super important to understand is that what we're starting to see with projects like World Mobile Token, right, which is on the Cardano network. Uh, projects like Akash, which is on, which is a its own standalone layer one blockchain, but it's in the Cosmos ecosystem. You're mm -hmm. starting to see uh, Jackal is in the Cosmos ecosystem. Hypercycle is its own thing, but it's actually ledgered on a side chain of Cardano, and underneath mm -hmm. this Singularity Net kind of umbrella of of incredible AI companies. What we're seeing is the ability for guys like you and me to start our own businesses and we can scale it to however we want, right? Let's say I, I, my barrier to entry is my money, but I do have the phone, right? Yeah. Well, I get, I get a one token license and I run it on my phone and it contracts and does work because remember it's machine to machine. You and I are not involved. Right. We might have been involved once when the original algorithm to crunch the 25,000 different ways that we should ingest vitamin C for the purpose of being antiviral. You know, how many, you know, it's just data crunching, right? That is the next big thing. I believe computation is the commodity that is going to drive innovation and productivity and value for the next 100 years. And what is computation? It's electricity married electricity. with hardware and, and, and running software. So electricity, running hardware, that is running software producing value. Well, gotcha. hypercycle, hypercycle ticks all those boxes. Yes, and that's, so to, 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 to bring it all home, it goes like this. So we talked about a lot, right? We talked about Cardano's World Mobile token. World Wonderful Mobile project. Yeah. World Mobile and Singularity Net have a partnership. Singularity created Hypercycle, have a partnership with them. Hypercycle, I linked that in the description so you could figure it out and do your own research and check what's going on. And also as a reminder, it all comes as a circle. Cardano is, I believe they have some type of partnership. Cardano links singularity.net or AGIX is up 7%. This is on July 13th. So it's kind of like a big circle. World Mobile's on Cardano. Well, you know what? I don't know Singular if it's necessarily cycle. a circle. You know what's interesting? The hmm. smartest guys, the smartest guys tend to coalesce. Right? Like yes. our, our CEO, Tufi. Tufi mm -hmm. has, been, has been interacting and collaborating with Ben Gortzel for years. Tufi is the, our CEO. Tufi Saliba. He... Yeah authored the paper, the total protocol with another gentleman named Dan, right? Yeah. And, and this is revolutionary because it's that whole um, transactions happening and valid and, and verifiable and authenticatable without a ledger. Yeah. Which is that whole layers zero stuff, right? Then you got right. Ben Gortzel, 30, 30 plus years PhD, world-class open source AI scientist, <laughs> Charles Hoskins, a brilliant guy. You may not like Charles. Heck of a marketer, I'll tell you that. You cannot deny his, in, his intellect, right? Yeah, smart guy. Smart right. people are working together to create value-added stuff. And you and I and every one of your listeners are able to, well, participate where you and I cannot participate with Google, Amazon, or um, Microsoft unless we own their stock. But even when we own their stock, we're not getting the lion's share of the profit. We're not. 
No. And, and you know what? That would lead me to like our last point, and then we'll do a little Q&A, which is yesterday we did a video. And the reason that the video came out is I asked a question. I said, if you can invest in Ripple, the company, before it went public, would you? And this is like for every company, actually, for in crypto. I said, let me be clear. I'm talking about the company, even though I own XRP. And we had 600 or so votes, and uh, the majority of people said yes. Oh. I would. As an investor, I would. Let me update this. Okay, sorry. We had 2,400 votes, and 45% said yes, and then 14% tell me more. So we actually did a video yesterday. It was, it was about Link2, and I talked about how Link2 is you're able to, to get into these companies pre-IPO. And there's, there's AI stuff, Cerebros, H2AI, all this stuff, SnapLogic, these guys. And of course, there's digital assets, which would be Ripple, PolySign, Circle, Uphold, iTrust, Copper. But one of the things that people complain about, rightfully so, and we talked about this, is that it's only for accredited investors here in the U.S. Now, outside the U.S. is different. We don't have those crazy accredited investors. I mean, not other places do. And there's different criteria. I understand. It's a big problem. But just like what Jerry said is like, we can't invest in this stuff and really get back. But I've been talking to these other guys out of Switzerland called Arcton. And one of the founders is a securities lawyer. And over there in Switzerland, you're able to buy into companies pre-IPO and invest in that way. But it's all digitalized. And it's like what Larry Fink was talking about, putting things on, on the blockchain, secured or um, for the for the securities to be digitized, put on the blockchain. And Organization, the yeah. Yeah. Now, this is, of course, if, if you're in America, you're still screwed. Sorry. This is how it goes. But for everybody else out there, I will do a, a video on these guys. But I think it's for everybody. And I'm not, and here's, I'll just say this before, before we get in the Q&A. I am not going to tell you, you should never use a VPN to get into something like that. You should never, ever do that. Other places, they can get into those things and you know get into things before as a private investor. But uh, I will cover that later. I understand people's frustrations with the credit investor. And then remember, that's the good old government doing that. But that's it for today.